second time cycles yet? Some, th there's, a, there's a recording out there, okay? So um, I'm gonna give you the theory behind it and then we're gonna talk about how it actually works in the market, okay? Um, and as you have questions, um, I'm gonna repeat your question, just to get the audio because this is on Facebook Live. So don't think I'm, you know, uh, say anything about you and your, your question. Okay, so we're gonna introduce you to the Apiary baseball team, okay? So the average player here at the Apiary Fund uh, can throw a baseball 50 yards, okay? So we're gonna play a game. Uh, the game goes like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you $1 for every yard you guess correctly. However, if you go over the amount that they actually throw the baseball, you don't get anything, okay? So it's kind of like price is right. You try and get closest to the actual retail price without getting it going over, right? If you go over, you don't get it, right? So, um, so the question is, uh, how far is the next person in line going to throw the, the, the baseball? Okay, so you get a dollar for every yard you guess. If you go over, you don't get anything. So here's the game. If you, if you guess 50 and he throws at 49, you win over, you don't get anything. But if you guess 50 and he throws at 51 yards, you get $50. Everybody understand the game? Okay, so here's the question that I want to pose to you. Um, how far is the next person in line going to throw the baseball? All we know about the APR baseball team, you've seen staff here, right? You've seen me. I'm obviously the all-star, right? I can throw it the furthest, okay? But you don't know who's up next, right? So I, I'm soliciting some, some, uh, some responses here. How far is the next person in line going to throw the baseball? 72. 72, yes, that is actually my furthest I've ever thrown at, is 73. So I like that. Okay, next person, 72, that's good. 65. 65. Anyone else? 49. 40, 49, okay, good. Any, any other guesses? 70. 70, I like the aggressive. Are you an aggressive <laughs> investor profile? <laughs> Invest, yeah, okay. That's usually what the aggressive people say. I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna go big, right? Go big or go home, right? Anybody super conservative? Anyone wanna guess one? I mean, you, you guarantee a buck, right? 35. 30, okay, there we go, all right. So, so it's fair to say we've got people across the whole spectrum here, okay? So if we're to graph all of these players, okay, <clears throat> what's gonna happen is that they're gonna, they're gonna fall into some sort of a bell curve, right? Um, we, we got me right over here, right? We've got uh, Dave right over here. He's the camera guy. You don't see him, okay? So, but the average is, is gonna be right in the middle. So we're gonna change the game just a little bit to kind of drive this point home. So we're gonna say, okay, instead of, throw, instead of getting one guess, you get 100 guesses. And instead of being able to guess all over the board, you just have to get, same, get that same number every single time, okay? So, her guess was 35, your guess was 72. We we're just gonna stick with that same number every time, okay? So how, do we, how did we do? If we were to guess right here in the middle uh, at 50, what would happen is we'd be right 50% of the time. We'd make $50 every time we were right. And so on average, doing it 100 times, we're gonna make 2,500 bucks. Everyone understand that? Okay, now what if we, what if we come up here some amount? Okay, uh, we're gonna call this sigma, okay? And, and, and what if we say, you know what? I, I'm, I'm a better guesser than you because you guess 50, I'm gonna guess 51. You guess 51, I'm gonna guess 52. Do any of you guys know any traders like this? Who say, look, I'm a better trader than you because I guess I got more money on this one trade, right? We see that all over the place, right? So if we come up here some amount, what we, what we gain, is we gain price, right? We make more money when we are actually right. What do we give up though? What we give up is accuracy, right? Okay, so in this case, sigma is one standard deviation. We'd be right 33% of the time. But in exchange, we actually make more money. Make sense? So doing it over 100 times, we make 1,980 bucks. Okay, so looking at those numbers, Obviously, guessing more than the average, not a good strategy. Everybody concede that point? Okay, so what if we come back here some amount? Okay, we're gonna come back one sigma. What do we give up? We give up price, right? We're not right as often, right? But what we gain is we gain 
accuracy, right? So we're right more often. So in this case, it's 66% of the time. We make $40, we make 2,640, okay? Now, here's something to think about. What if we, who here hates being wrong? Okay, I, I, me too, right? I hate it, I hate it. I've never been wrong in my, in, in my life. Just ask my wife, right? Just kidding, she'll tell you the truth. Um, okay, so what if we came back here some amount, we said, you know what, I hate being wrong, I hate it so much, I'm gonna guess such a small number, I'm gonna be right, so many times, okay, right? Like who here wants to be right 99% of the time in the market? Okay, go ahead, this isn't a trick question. I've got, this, I've got the system for you. You take one pip of profit, you have 100 pip stop loss. You'll be right, boom, add water, you're gonna be right 99% of the time, okay? Now, but that, that's not the point. Is that a profitable system? No, it's not, right? Okay, because what you're doing is you're doing a thing called over-optimization, okay? So what we do is we take such a, such a small amount, all in the name of accuracy, right? Look, I'm 90% right, right? Like that sounds really good, doesn't it? But is that where you make the most money? Okay, so you're doing a little thing called over-optimization. So as we look at these numbers, what we see is that there's a sweet spot where we, where we make the most money, okay? And that, that sweet spot is right below the average, okay, somewhere, okay? So how do we get to that point? That's the question we, want, we need to be asking ourselves, okay? So here's what we do, okay? So what we're gonna do is, is remember our conversation, we said we train our eyes to see what? Dinosaur bones, right? Okay, so what are the dinosaur bones here on on this chart we're looking at pivot highs and pivot lows right okay so if we have a all we're going to do over here is we're going to take this 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 chart right here and we're going to measure from the low on this chart all the way up to the high okay that's all we're going to do we're, we're tracking the pivot high and the pivot low and we're going to say here's the low here's the high and we're going to we're going to measure it right Okay, so we're gonna say that that went up 50. Now this could be $50, it could be 50 pips, it could be 50 ticks, right? Those are just different, it could be 50 cents, right? Those are just different markets. All we're looking at is a chart, right? So it goes up 50, okay? Then we count how much it comes down right there, okay? So let's say that it comes down 25, then we measure it going back up and then coming back down, okay? And what we're gonna get is we're gonna get some sort of numbers. Okay, so as we look at this pattern here, what's the average, so, so first off, what's this, what's this pattern called? We got higher highs, we got higher lows. What's that called? An uptrend, right? Some people call it a bull pullback. You know, there's different names for it. It's an uptrend, okay? What's the average run on this this chart right here the average bullish run it's 50 right we have a bullish run right here that went up 50 we have a bullish run up right here that went up 50 the average is 50 where are we going to make the most money okay so here's here's how we answer that question all we're going to do is we're going to take these numbers okay and we're going to we're going to do an average remember you know seventh grade math, maybe this was sixth grade, I don't know. It's not very hard, we all know what an average is, right? So we take 50, which corresponds to that 50 right over there. And then we take this 25, which corresponds to that 25. 50, 25, and we're gonna average it, and we get some sort of number right over here, okay? That is most of the time, that, I mean, that, that's always gonna be right under the average. It'll be the average or or, or excuse me, it'll be the average of the bullish runs or lower, right, every single time, okay? So what that's gonna do is that's gonna give us a projection of how far do we expect this to go. So the numbers there are like? Yep, these, num these four numbers correspond to these four numbers right over here. And those numbers are the? Uh, yep, the, the, they, they measure from the pivot low to the pivot high, right up there. And I, I did this myself, so it's exactly to scale, this, this, this PowerPoint, okay? <clears throat> okay, so what we're gonna do is, is, is we get some number right here, which tells us projection in, in price, right? Okay, we're gonna do that same thing, but we're gonna do it for time, okay? 
So we're going we're gonna to count how many bars this is. Let's count that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There were 10 bars right there, which correspond to that 10. And then when it pulled back, it took 8 bars. And then it goes forward again, and it goes up 6 bars. And then that pullback right here came down 4. Okay, so what we do is we do that same calculation. We take 10 plus 8 plus 6 plus 4. We divide it by 4 and we get some sort of number over here, which gives us a projection of how long it should take. Okay? Now, there's a couple of things that I know in the market for absolute. The market's not absolute, but there are a couple of things that are absolute. One of them I told you earlier today during the trade room, and that was that markets always go from pivot low to pivot high to pivot low to pivot high, right? We just, that, it always does that, right? We just don't know the, the magnitude of, of those pivot high to pivot lows. Here's the second thing that I know. 100% of the time, the market always goes to the right. 100% of the time, it always goes to the right, okay? It, it does, it's, it's amazing, okay? So what I've just done here is I've given myself a projection in time I've given, given my pr pr uh, a projection in price, and what it does is it actually gives me this little target right up here in an ideal market of how long it should take and how far it should go. Okay, this is in an ideal market, and I live in an ideal world. Just kidding, I don't, <laughs> okay? But, <clears throat> okay, so now <clears throat> one of three things is going to happen. Once I've got this box on here, I'm 100% right. Because it's either going to what? It or it's going to go sideways. up, down, or sideways, right? It has to, right? It always goes to the right, right? So um, here's, here's what could happen. Number one is we could be wrong, right? Who's ever been wrong in their life, right? The market comes down and it comes against us. Okay, now this morning we, we said this. We said, uh, I, I believe it was you that said, at what point will you get out, right? You asked that, and I said, what? When it crosses this line, I'm going to do what? I'm going to go into fix-it mode, right? So at this point, hey, I'm wrong. That's the point where it crosses down here that I said, I'm wrong, right? Okay, so we, that, that's you get out, or you look to get out, you minimize risk, that, that's your rejection point, okay? Uh, the second thing that could happen is it, go, it comes over here. Now think about this. If it just kind of comes sideways, okay? Think about this. Your, project, your, your target is 37. You're up 20, and it's just kind of going sideways. What's the normal reaction of most people? Most people go, mm, I'm doing okay, right? I'm up 20, right? I'm up 20. My target's 37. I'm halfway there, it's doing okay. You know what, I'm gonna, hold, I'm gonna hang on to it, right? Let's go back to this, uh, let's go back to this uh, bell curve here and, and, and think about this in terms of time. If our average is seven bars and we go eight bars, nine bars, 10 bars, 11 bars, where's, where is our probability? Is that, it, is that it's going to continue up? No, no. right? Let, let's, let's go back. Uh, I'm going the wrong way. Let's go back here. Okay, so we've just gone seven bars, and we know that this is a pivot. What's coming next? Another pivot. Uh, this is a pivot low, right? So we know what's coming next is a pivot high and we've gone seven bars and then we go eight bars, nine bars, ten bar you, you see my point, right? Where is your probability? The probability is that it's going to pivot and comes down. So at this point, the natural person says, I'm going to hang on. The right response is, I need to be fearful, right? The market's going to, yeah, I need to, I need to get out. Yes. Half of the time that I allotted, 
So do I go through a calculation where if it goes up so much, I get out because I'm, I'm up? Okay, let's talk about that third one. That's actually kind of where I'm going with this, okay? Um, the third thing that could happen is this. Hey, lo and, lo and behold, we could actually be right, right? I know that doesn't happen too much, right? No, it actually does happen, right? I mean, even the worst trader in the world is right some percentage of the time, right? So think about most people's responses at this point. Like she so eloquently said, well, if it goes up 10% in, let's say, let, let's say that's 10% in one bar, would I get out? Okay, let's, let's, let's think about this from, a, from just a statistical standpoint. This isn't an emotional question because I need, my emotions are, I've got a house payment, right? I want to pay bills. I want to go on vacation, right? Fill in the blanks with that. That's, that's the emotion speaking right here where people say, I'm getting out. What's the right response? Well, we've just identified that it, if it goes up more price, so if it hits here, and it does it before it hits my time, what have we just identified? More price in less time. Where's our momentum? Our momentum is in our favor. So are the markets trending in nature? Yes. I, well, okay, so, so I, I'm biased. My bias says yes, okay? There are traders out there who will say no. Um, there's a good book on it it's by Malcolm Gladwell called Fooled by Randomness, if you want to read it. His, his, his argument is that uh, markets know are not trending in nature, okay? There's an argument for it. I, I cite on the other side that yes, markets are trending in nature, okay? So if I believe that markets are trending in nature, and I've just identified that it's gone more price in less time, what should be the response? That's when I actually ought to be greedy, right? Now, greed takes the form of different things, right? I could hang on to it. I could go in deeper. I could go in with more, right? But the wrong response is to, is to take it out and say, yes, I'm up, oh, pat myself on the back, and I'm getting out. Does that make sense why? Yeah. Would I move my stop losses up beyond this point or to some break-even point? Yeah at that point. Um, sometimes, but here's, here's what you have to be careful of. If, if you move it too close, th there's, there's volatility in the market, right? So the reason I take two positions and I take three or four pips on one is, is not because I think that I'm, I'm right on this, it's to, it's to capture volatility. So at any given point, 95% of my trades are going to be up two pips or down two pips at any given point during my trade, right? That's just, that's just volatility, just moving around, right? So all I'm doing is I'm just taking a little bit, bit of that volatility out. So uh, at what point would I, would I hang on to this or would I move it up? Once, I've, once I'm kind of getting towards the end of my trading session, um, I'll, I'll take off, you know, whatever profits and then I'll, I'll leave them running with my stop loss right down here. So I usually will risk all of it. Um, now, not always, some, it depends on the, the amount of pips, but I need to make sure that I don't, bring, uh, I don't bring it into that range of volatility. Has anybody used a trailing stop before? Okay, yeah, pretty much everybody, right? And what do you find? is that it, go, it comes down and it hits it and then it goes back in your direction, right? That's just because you're, you're, you're not tuned to the, to the volatility of the market, right? There's just random movements in there where it'll go down 10 pips and then it'll go back up, right? And so if you're trailing it, that's when it stops you out, yeah. Is it safe to say that um, your trades that you're just capturing volatility uh, is just used to mitigate your losses and your runner is your actual profit? Right, yep, that's exactly what it is. So my, my sorry, I need to restate it for people online. Um, so when I take multiple positions, my very first objective is to mitigate uh, and, and just book a little bit into the pro into the book a little bit of profits in into the market. Okay, so I'll add positions right here, and if it goes in my favor, I'll add more positions, and I'll I'll start taking them taking them on and off. Even if if I get in and I, I nail it right here and I get in, um, I'm still adding positions as it goes up. 
if, I, if I'm getting in right in here, I'm still adding positions right here. So I'm just averaging. So it doesn't really necessarily matter the exact. I don't have to nail that, that the, the entry point because I'm taking profits into the account and I'm adding positions regardless of whether it goes for me or against me. That makes sense? Okay. So let's go into the market. Go back one second. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought you wanted me in there too. So, okay. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, Jerry. Okay. Uh, we already went through this one. Here is the most common, uh, the most common responses, and here's what we ought to do. There should, there should be a, uh, oh, <laughs> I like that. Okay, uh, be greedy, be fearful, get out. Okay, those are our responses. Okay, um, now I, I want to I point something out to you here real quick. Um, uh, Sean's wobbling technique, is that a standalone strategy? No, it's a technique, right? It's a money management technique. It's something that you put on top of a, a system, a strategy, right? Price and time cycles. Is it a strategy? No, it's a technique, okay? So notice I, I, I didn't say anything about flags or, or bull pullbacks or, or cup and handles or head and shoulders. That's the strategy, right? What price and time cycles are is it's just a technique to get in and out, or to get, to get out, to manage that trade. Does that make sense? So it's a, we lay it on top of, of our strategy. So what, what is Nate's strategy? I trade bull pullbacks, okay? It is this pattern right here, higher highs, higher lows. That's one of my favorite patterns that I trade. And, and I, I told you guys that before I even got into it, right? I said, here's what we're looking for for today. We're looking for a bull pullback, right? And then on top of that, so, so my, my pullback will tell me when to get in, okay? And then on top of that, my price and time cycles tell me how I manage it and what, my, what are my responses, what are my responses when the market does one, two, or three. Does that make sense? So I always have an eject button. I always have a place where I say, I'm out, right? Like, the, for whatever reason, I don't like Britain today. Maybe it's because they had a new baby. Maybe it's because, you know, whatever, right? Like, there are just days where the market doesn't go in my favor. And it's okay to say, I don't like this currency that day. Shut it down and then come back. Think about what that does. That allows you to emotionally reset. Who here gets emotionally tied to their trades? Everybody should be raising their hand, right? Like it, Sean does, right? And Sean has been trading for at least two years, right? <laughs> two decades. Oh, I was off. It's, it's one zero. It's, it's really nothing. It's just one zero, right? Okay, so Sean's been trading forever. He gets tied to his trades. Are there times where he has to emotionally reset? Absolutely. Look, there are times where you, you have a fight with your spouse and you get in front of the computer. Are you level-headed at that time? No. no right? Like, and so it's okay to shut it down, let it, let it emotionally reset. That is this right here. Look, I'm just, I'm out. We don't always have to have a bet in the market, right? Uh, or we say, okay, we, it's, it's going sideways, right? We, we know where it's going. Okay. So here's the steps I would say that you take. Very first, you have to pick a pattern. That's the strategy. Um, I, I, I do this with breakout trades. I do it with flags. I do it with pennants. Um, I do it with cup and handles. It doesn't matter the strategy, but I pick a pattern, okay? And then what you do is you place your price and time cycle on the last pivot point, okay? Because what? We know 100% of the time the market goes from pivot low to Pivot high to pivot low, right? So if I've had a pivot high and I'm trying to, to guess where the pivot low is, right? The longer it goes in my favor, the more I can say, yeah, that's probably a pivot, right? So I just put it on that, that point to say, okay, where's the next one going? 
right? And then that's what's going to determine our risk to reward ratio. Now, are all trades created equal? No, right? There are times where you have a, uh, you have a, uh, a price and time cycle here where this candle is right up here. You guys ever seen that? Okay, anybody who is the, uh, the um, analytical trader, right? And I, I told you, you're two, you have to look for two entry or two signals, right? You have to look for the close above this low um, and the break. Well, the break could be all the way up here, right? Okay, and so, well, does it make sense to, to, have, to risk 10 to make 10? Well, you have to determine that for yourself. Me personally, I say no, right? So the aggressive trader, they go, oh, okay, well, there's the close I'm in. That's, that's one of the two signals I'm good, right? Because I don't want to miss the trade, right? It's this balance, balancing act. And I'm not saying one's good or one's bad, but here is what I am saying. You have to acknowledge the actual risk that you're taking on. The aggressive trader is just taking on more risk, right? Well, when we take on more risk, what does he gain? He's, he's not going to miss out on this trade, is he? Right? He, he's trying to pinpoint that, that, that um, entry point, and so he'll probably get better entry points. The analytical person is going to wait for more confirmation. Why would they wait for more confirmation? Yeah, they want to be right. They want accuracy, right? What do they give up? They're going to give up a little bit of price. One's not right or one's not wrong. That's a personal thing, but it's this balancing act of what's, what's right for you. Does that, does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so coming back here, uh, determine our, our, our risk to reward ratios. Let me give you one example uh, of the market um, here. So we have a run. Remember what our eyes are looking at is pivot highs and pivot lows. Okay, so this run came up 35, then it came down 20. This one went up 17, down 11, 82, and 27. Okay, so what we can do is what? We just average those, right? We take 35, right here, that 35 plus 20, plus 17, 11, 27, divided by six, which is the number of our runs, and we get some number. That's gonna give us a projection up. So, well, if I know this last run came down 27, where's gonna be my target? It's gonna be right above that high right there. Make sense? Okay, we'll do the same thing for time, and we get some number. It should take us 12 bars. Now notice, I didn't, do you guys see a time frame on this? I tried to hide this, but obviously I didn't do a good job. Do you guys see a time, do you guys know what, what time frame this is? Could this be a one minute chart? Yeah. Could this be a daily chart? Yeah. Could it be a monthly chart? Yeah. Like, like it, it honestly, it doesn't matter. So we always get the question, well, Nate, yeah, you're always trading on a five-minute chart or one-minute chart, but you know what about longer charts? Like this, this is this doesn't care what chart it is, right? It could be it could be thirty-five thousand dollars, right? It could be a yearly chart, right? Now most people aren't going to trade on a yearly chart, but uh, you you guys get my point, okay? So that's going to give us a projection. You know somebody's been messing with my PowerPoint. I think it's me. Okay, but uh, that gives us a projection in price and time, it gives us a target right up here. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, okay, so I'm running out of time. This should, uh, I'm going to, sp spoiler alert, this actually worked out. Yeah, something like that. There we go. So you can see what, you know, the, the, uh, This one right here had actually uh, had, uh, had hit our time target, which was right up there. So you can see that, that the time, it didn't quite hit my price target, and it hit my time target, so I would have just gotten out. Okay? So if it, whatever it hits first is what, I, what, what gives me the emotional response. If it hits my price target first, I say, I'm greedy. I'm sticking with it. If it hits my time target first, I go, I'm fearful, I'm getting out. Make sense? Okay. 
It's the exact opposite of, of what we should do, right? Like this is the genius part of it. You, you ever think that the market's out to get you and you should just do the opposite of what you think you ought to do and you'll just be a millionaire, right? Okay, well that's, that's essentially what this is, is doing. It's just rule-based, okay? How far do you go? Uh, that's our time cycle. In this case, it was 12 bars. Oh, how many, how many, how many of these uh, cycles do I do? Um, there, you do the same amount every single time. I use six because it's not too many uh, to to where it's cumbersome, but it's it's more than like one where where it almost means nothing. So you could do four, five, six, seven, eight, somewhere in there. It doesn't really matter. I use six because it's a good round number. Okay. It is. Yeah, it's a prime number. It is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I, you, you can, this, this works on, on all of them, double tops, double bottoms, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, so again, the, it, it's, it doesn't matter what the price cycle is. Okay. Uh, or excuse me, what the pattern, what the strategy is. Okay. Um, okay. Any other questions? We got to wrap up and do some rewards. Thank you everybody for who's on Facebook live. Uh, we'll sign out and uh, okay, I guess that's your guys' cue to clap. Yeah. Okay.